I feel and I know students are ready to resume school because it's becoming tiring, it's becoming boring. Staying at home for over three months doing nothing, oh my god. I miss school a lot. I miss my friends, I miss my teachers, I miss my everybody in school. Also the birthday parties, they are fun. And the activities we do in school. And at home we just have to go online and finish our notes. They still write more for us. But it's not fun. When we are in school, we look at the board and we write ourselves. But this one is just questions they ask us and then we write it on a notebook. I like how we do in school. <laughs> Children want to go back to school. They are tired of staying at home. They miss all this. They miss their friends. They miss the swing in school. They miss the playground. They miss their teachers. They miss so many things in school. We all know that children are carriers and we don't want them to carry this virus to their homes to vulnerable and aged parents. What are school authorities in all category trying to do? What measures are they putting in place to make sure that when school reopens, the students will be safe? Don't go away. We will be back very shortly. My name, Toshima Pius Ikeravi. This is against all odds. In as much as greater lessons are learned outside the classroom, through social interaction with like minds or experienced adults, we cannot take away the fact that the four walls of the classroom plays a major role in the foundation and grooming of a child. Children are social beings that love to interact and mix up at every stage. If asked, the best moments are spent with friends and teachers. Education at every point brings out the best from a child. It builds a child's confidence, aura. It gives the child a sense of security, privacy, and awareness. And whether the society agrees or not, children have missed school a great deal. Group D, question number eight. What, which of the following is an obtuse angle? Which of the following is an obtuse angle? 93, A, 93 degrees, B, 193 degrees, C, 293 degrees, D, 350 degrees. Which of this is an obtuse angle? What I miss about school is that when you're in school, you get to meet people of different characters, different people of different backgrounds, and you get to learn more because the knowledge you have, you get, you add it together, and you get to learn more. But when you're at home, you're only restricted to your parents and your your siblings, and it does not make you to learn more because it's still from them, you still learn what you have. So it's you. But if you are if you are around people from different people from different backgrounds, you will get to know more. And again. 
these online lessons we are doing you don't get to interact with your teacher you don't get to have eye contact with your teachers and it's, and some people don't get to understand but in class if you're in class with your teachers you get to interact you get to have eye contact with them they get to demonstrate with their body and so on so i miss you a lot This is against all odds. I miss when we lived without fear. Fear of the invincible enemy. Fear of one another. When can we go back to days of hugging and high fives, of studying in a classroom and going about our daily lives? When next will we visit our loved ones across the bridge? COVID-19 obviously has no intentions to leave us so soon. Based on the fact that children are carriers, the government in its own wisdom is taking the time to carefully monitor how children can go back to school. But no matter how long this takes, schools will definitely reopen. The big question is, what measures are school authorities putting in place to ensure safety? That's uh, basic one. We expect every child to have attained the age of six. From that age, they can always use a face mask. So we we'll ensure that all of them comply from basic one to basic six. We have our gun thermometer ready to check if there's a rise in temperature of any child. If we notice a rise in the body temperature of a child, we ask the child to go home. And also, we will not allow any sick child to stay in the school. As soon as they gain entrance into the school, we have running water in the school premises where they can always wash their hands before they go into the school. We've also decided not to hold the regular school assembly, so we will embrace the classroom morning assembly for our pupils now, so that we can decongest the number of children that will gather at a time. For our pupils that are coming to school in the school bus, we ensure that before they board the bus, their temperature is checked, the hand sanitizer is used before they join the bus to suspend all sporting activities because this will bring the children together and then we've also decided to eliminate the playtime. So for now, we look for other things that they can be doing at their break time rather than playing together. Now for the teachers and the minders, the school will ensure, the school management will ensure rather that they use their face mask from the point they are engaging the pupils till the last child leaves the class.
uh, it's especially very gratifying that uh, you would speak to a fellow Nigerian across the oceans. It means that uh, it will afford us, uh, uh, the, the, it will enable us to renew some of our facilities, like uh, the washrooms, toilets, and uh, facilities that we were hoping and planning to develop. Uh, this pandemic has brought the need closer to, to hand that we need to do that now is to deploy temperature guns at all entry gates so that we can take a temperature as the staff enter the campus to ensure that they are not uh, showing symptoms of uh, COVID-19. Seeing that Fiji hasn't uh, confirmed any case now for close to two months, we are just hoping that uh, there are no carriers coming onto the campus. But once the next step we want to do, and which is now going on, is to install all the hygiene uh, equipment in toilets, meeting rooms, classrooms, so that people can uh, disinfect themselves properly. Uh, but in the classrooms, we'll be putting in a, a <clears throat> sanitizers so that uh, staff and students can uh, uh, wipe up their hands whenever they touch any surfaces as they come into the meeting rooms and classrooms. What we have decided to do is to ask the government to let us use that book allowance to supply computers rather than books. Because with, computer, with computers and, and similar devices, you'll be able to put uh, e-books so that students don't really need to buy uh, the, the hard copy books these days. They'll be able to download books onto the system, onto their computers. So that is what we intend to do, to ensure that we have 100% readiness when, whenever online uh, is being delivered again. We provided masks for all the students. Um, everyone entering the institution is sanitized and is made to wash their hands. Rooms. Uh, we will be enforcing social distancing to make sure everyone is two meters apart. Um, even in the classes, in the dining room, um, when they are sleeping, they are not so clustered. There is enough space. The teachers, everyone has been trained on, um, you know, uh, on um, personal hygiene, on maintaining social distancing. And on maintaining, you know, on, on being safe enough, you know, if you notice, uh, if we notice that um, anyone, you know, anyone's temperature is rising, have an isolation room as well that they can be isolated from everybody else, right? And we're in touch with um, hospitals as well, so that in the case where anyone has the, um, the virus, um, they can be isolated, first of all, and then they can be safely transported to um, an isolation center. Of course, we have a matron on, on site, so we're, we're, we're right on track. You know? So when Lagos State says that uh, it's, it's safe for schools to resume, um, we'll resume as well. But in terms of um, you know, checking up the students, everyone is fine. Everyone has been accounted for. So we thank God. <laughs>
the usage of hand sanitizer. Please, every parent must provide a child. At least 700 milligrams of it is not too much for a child to take in into the bag to school. That was what I prepared my children to do as at this hour. And of course, every school must ensure that there is water and sanitizer to wash their hands at school. I was really worried. I was really, really scared to see that the children are the ones to be used as an experiment to check, because that is the language they made us to understand, to check if the, the COVID-19 or the coronavirus is transferable from a child to another one, which they said is not possible. So the children were like sent out as an experiment, but thank God they are fine. What I normally do when they wake up in the morning, they took their baths, I dress them up, I prepare their lunch, because they normally stay, at, uh, they stay over to eat in the school uh, compound. So I just prepare their food. But before they leave the house, as a believer, as a Christian, and as a mother, I will always pray for them that the Egyptian sickness, as we normally call it, is never your portion. I cover you with the blood of Jesus, and I give you every protection from the Almighty God. It's just prayer. And I believe in my heart that it is done. So that is my confidence. Three months running and still counting, the awareness is high. Children in turn have learned from their parents, caregivers, social media, news, and so many medium of communication. How ready are they and how can they protect themselves? It's time for we students to resume schools because no one knows when COVID-19 is going to be over. No one knows when we are going to find a cure for COVID-19. As far as we know all preventive measures, we can now resume schools. And here are the preventive measures. Six things to do to prevent coronavirus in school. One, maintain social distancing. Two, wear face mask. Three, wash your hands with soap and water for 30 seconds. Four, use hand sanitizer. Five, sneeze in your elbow. Six, pray. I wish this is over sooner. When can we go back to days of studying in a classroom and going about our daily lives? COVID-19, as we all know, is a very infectious disease. And in anticipation of the reopening of schools, I'm going to be taking various measures in order not to get infected by COVID-19. We'll try our possible best to maintain social distance. And also in our classrooms, we'll try and sit two meters away from each other, the classes won't be as crowded as before. I owe myself a responsibility, so by the time we are able to go back to school, we'll be able to keep social distance, not just see anybody and start hugging the person. We have to carry our sanitizers, our face masks, like our own virus and boots. In social distancing, one of the social distancing rules is that no crowded place. And you don't know who is who, you don't know the home they are coming from. And you, you are not sure of where they are coming from, so you need to prevent yourself. You don't need to be stay in a crowded place. And again, you need to be prayerful. And so when I go to school, first, your hand sanitizer. Rub it when you are entering the gate. You rub it first. Second, when you enter the bathroom, don't rush and go and be running to the bathroom and be saying, I'll be the first to wash my hand. Third, wear your face mask and don't pull it unless the thing chokes you. COVID-19 is real. Don't be a carrier of COVID-19. Say no by staying safe. We need to protect ourselves as we go to school. Remember the prevention measures taught by daddy and mommy. Together we can fight COVID-19. Wow. Sounds like these children have their weapons to send COVID-19 back to base. In the face of COVID-19, another greater evil springs forth. Rip. This year's theme for Children's Day celebration had emphasis on the girl-child education. What is the place of the girl-child education in the face of COVID-19 and rape? We're used to the formal education being inside the school and inside the classroom. 
So for us, we're talking to the head teachers in the various schools that we have girls in, you know, making sure they have wash stations with the first thing, hand hygiene. So teaching the girls and other students in the school the importance of actually washing your hands, then providing the face masks for them because, you know, they need these things to help protect themselves. So we're making sure that they understand why they're wearing them and what this illness is about. I think with the rules of... Um, social distancing, wearing face masks and other ways that we can prevent the COVID infection itself. I think if the idea will be to actually hope that school opens up as quickly as possible because we know with other diseases like with Ebola, people were out of school for almost a year and in like Sierra Leone and the rest of the countries, like girls didn't go back to school. A lot of the girls didn't go back to school after. They got married, they had children, all these things and then you lose them because they're already behind. So the hope will be schools should open as quick as possible, then you obey all the rules of social distancing and then classrooms can start and then we can get educated. And also not forget the advocacy of why it's important to actually educate the girl child. She's behind, that means that in everything, economically, socially, whatever the case will be in society, she gets, she, she's left. If you're behind, you need to push for you to be more involved before you can catch up. For the less privileged girl, it's more difficult and she has no voice. So we hope with people like us, we can actually advocate more for them. I think it's worse than it was before because um, first of all, they have poverty to deal with and lack of education. Now with being at home, gender-based violence has increased as we know. It's very common. Now it's going to be more rampant because you have that the girl is at the close proximity to whoever her violator might be. And these girls don't talk. They don't say anything because they're afraid that there's shame attached to it. With the new normal now, we must approach it with a different attitude of protecting ourselves. It's about you first. Discipline and responsibility plays a huge role as we approach every sector of the economy, whether in worship centers, malls, markets, banks, or even schools. Caution is the key word we must arise and bring forth our collective efforts and strategy to face this war against all odds and help all our children and girl child get the desired education they need an idle mind is the devil's workshop good morning, oh good morning how are you good to see you all Thank you. Wow. Hello, teacher. Thank you very much. Together we can fight COVID-19. It's a good thing that the children themselves are aware of the dangers of COVID-19 and so they are ready to protect themselves. The school authorities are also ready to make sure that the virus is curtailed. Thank you for always staying with us on Against All Odds. Let's do this again, same time, next week, same station. It is the new normal. Remember, Always wash your hands with soap on the running water. Sanitize your hands. Use your face marks when necessary. And when there is no need to go anywhere, stay at home, the safest measure. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Dushma Pius Ikirafe.